Hey guys, it's Coach Barryline. Uh, getting ready to start your first video lesson of this uh, new unit on the Civil War. We're going to start off kind of giving some background and talking about uh, the slavery issue and how it kind of becomes uh, the focal point of larger uh, larger issues between the North and the South are going to lead to the war. All right, so by 1850, uh, slavery had existed for over 200 years in the Americas. Uh, many northern states had, had uh, most, all northern states by that time, sorry, all northern states had, had freed uh, their slaves at that point. However, some northern states only freed uh, children born after slavery was banned and, and kept their mothers and their fathers enslaved. So, you know, even in the 1840s, slavery uh, continued to exist in several uh, northern states. However, by, by, by 1850, you know, two major, two societies existed. The north, where they had what was called free labor, uh, labor for wages, and the south, where uh, many workers were uh, slaves. Many Southerners believed that their economy depended upon slave labor, and those who, who supported slavery believed that, that you know, their property rights as guaranteed by the Constitution were more important, whereas Northerners uh, often approached it from a, from a basic democratic ideology of freedom and, and humanity and, and things of that nature. So it was difficult for uh, opponents of slavery to overcome the property claims. And the Constitution, uh, you know, specifically uh, prevented the regulation of the slave trade in, in, in its original form. Um, so as a result, the abolition movement did, uh, was slow to gain popular support in the North. However, after the Mexican-American War and continued westward expansion, more than half a million square miles of new territory were being added to the United States. And this is going to be kind of the, the touchstone or the spark that, that uh, lets off this, this uh, explosion of this division, uh, explosion of division amongst uh, northerners, northern and southern politicians. Some anti-slavery activists wanted to ban slavery altogether. Of course, the Southerners and others wanted to allow slavery there. So California applied to become a state in 1850, and the number of free states and slave states at that time were equal. So the balance of political power would have changed, specifically representation in the House and the Senate. So California approved a constitution banning slavery and applied for statehood. Uh, Kentucky Senator Henry Clay, who had been the Speaker of the House for, for decades, but had just come out of retirement to return to, to be the Senate, introduced a, what becomes known as the Compromise of 1850, uh, which is a series of uh, bills basically uh, to compromise on the issue. And as a result, you know, you had these debates around the compromise, the most famous of which was Daniel Webster and John C. Calhoun. Calhoun opposed the compromises, and of course Webster felt that the preservation of, of the Union was the most important thing. William Seward, uh, who attacked slavery itself, uh, rise to prominence and becomes known as a radical for his anti-slavery position. So Calhoun's death, however, in March, removes one of the main obstacles to compromise. And after that, in July, Zachary Taylor, the president, also dies, and that removes another obstacle. Taylor had uh, supported the states being brought in as free. He didn't want to expand slavery at all. So Miller Fillmore uh, is more likely to agree to compromise, so he supports the, the Compromise of 1850. So five laws passed based on Clay's resolutions forming the Compromise of 1850. Uh, one of these was the Fugitive Slave Act. The passage of Fugitive Slave Act made it a federal crime to assist runaway slaves. It also allowed the arrest of escaped slaves in the states where slavery was illegal. It was openly resisted in the North. Uh, mobs rescued slaves from police stations and threatened slave catchers. And by 1851, uh, you hear the first talks, the first ma major talks about seceding from the Union. One Northerner, Harriet Beecher Stowe, um, had lived in Cincinnati for a time, and this was one of the main way stations for uh, the Underground Railroad. And, of course, she used her, um, her uh, experiences and, and uh, things that she heard from other other people to write Uncle Tom's Cabin. It was 
book about slavery, about the slave issue, and it outraged many, many Southerners and raised tensions uh, to a new height. In fact, when Lincoln met uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe during the, during the Civil War, he said, oh, you, well, you're the little woman who caused this great war, uh, basically talking about the book and its importance. All right, so the, the, the Kansas-Nebraska Act is going to be kind of the tipping point and, and where we go from political rhetoric to actual violence. Clay and Webster both, uh, both were killed, which leads to new leadership in Congress. Stephen Douglas becomes the uh, majority leader in the Senate. And basically, you had a proposed railroad connecting California to the rest of the nation. This is a dividing issue. Southerners wanted it to end in New Orleans, and Northerners like Douglas um, uh, wanted it to end in Chicago. He was from Illinois, after all. Uh, so the Northern Route land had to be officially open for settlement by the government. So Douglas proposed organizing the Kansas and Nebraska territories. Uh, where the issue would be settled by popular sovereignty. And what this means is that uh, the states would get to decide whether or not they would be slave, whether they'd be slave or free. Um, as, a, as a compromise for passing the Kansas-Nebraska Act, Southern senators uh, insisted that it also repeal the Missouri Compromise, or I'm sorry, the Missouri Compromise's limits on sla slavery uh, to the north. And uh, Douglas makes a deal in 1854, the Kansas-Nebraska Act becomes law. And almost immediately, it's problematic. Um, in the north, protests against the law break out. Um, Northerners are outraged that, that, that uh, Northern Democrats had voted for the act. And many Northern Democrats quit the party and shift to the Whig Party. However, the Whig Party was even more uh, more damaged by this. Uh, some Northern Whigs uh, who opposed slavery on moral grounds, whereas others uh, supported slavery. So the two groups are going to stop working together, and it's going to lead to the split of the Whigs and the rise of the Republican Party. So the Free Soil Party, which had been formed in 1848 by Northern Whigs and Democrats, people that were anti-slavery, and People of all political parties who opposed slavery spread were called Free Soilers. So the Free Soil Party was kind of the, the, the basis, the foundation of the Republican Party. And the Republican Party is basically uh, formed from a meeting of Free Soilers, Northern Whigs, and other anti-slavery uh, proponents in, the, in other parties. So the Republican Party really grows out of the anti-slavery movement. And the two ma major new Republicans were William Seward and, of course, Abraham Lincoln. Like I said, almost immediately the Kansas-Nebraska Act uh, reveals itself to be a terrible idea. Uh, many acts of slavery-related lawlessness plagued Kansas territory, and by 1856 the territory was being called Bleeding Kansas. Uh, and it was a huge stake in the slavery debate. The pro Pro slavery and free soil forces were really actually fighting violently for control. So each side tried to control the territory's elections and later a vote on the state constitution. Immigrant, group, immigrant groups from both sides flooded in the, into the territory in an effort to establish or to prevent slavery, most notably from Missouri. So the settlement of slavery issue by, by popular sovereignty wasn't a vote of all the people who lived in the territory. In fact, it was uh, the, the legislature that would, would choose it. So a lot of the fights were over who would be elected to the legislature. So voter fraud occurred in the f first election in November 1854. Uh, and um, in March 1855, uh, the elections for a territorial legislature. So congressional and legislature uh, elections both had widespread fraud. And when it met, it, it quickly passed a strict slave code into law. It was a pro-slavery uh, pro uh, legislature, but most free soilers felt that it had been elected from fraud. So free soilers refused to accept it and elected their own governor and legislature. And by 1856, you have two governments in Kansas, one free, one slave.
So again, in effect, you have two governments of Kansas now. The, t the town of Lawrence, Kansas, had become a center for anti-slavery activity. Now, Franklin Pierce, who was the president at the time, uh, you know, he, he was a New Hampshire Democrat, uh, northerner, yet he was uh, under influence of pro-slavery congressmen and senators. And he condemned the free soil government. He said that the, that the free soil government in Kansas was nothing more than rebels and that uh, they, should be, they should be stopped. Uh, so basically, pro-slavery Kansas officials charged the free soilers with treason and a pro-slavery posse rode into Lawrence to arrest those leaders and, and much of the town was looted and burned by the posse. So in addition to this violence, you had uh, a massacre occur under the leadership of John Brown, a uh, committed absolute a abolitionist. Uh, he, he moves to Kansas with his sons in order to try to uh, start a free soil town there. But uh, he appoints himself captain of the local anti-slavery militia and he becomes outraged by the sack of Lawrence. So as a result, you get the Potawatomi Massacre. He and a small group of followers, including his sons, dragged five pro-slavery settlers out of their cabins and executed them. This again becomes known as the Potawatomi Massacre. So the end result is a civil war breaks out in Kansas. The large bands of pro-slavery and anti-slavery uh, troops roam the uh, territories and finally uh, uh, finally the president president pierce has to send in troops to try to stop the fighting however a guerrilla war continues uh into uh into the next year and, and you have uh you know lots of violence and crimes uh carried out uh, by both sides but violence over Can kansas actually spreads to congress uh, charles sumner of Massachusetts, a senator from Massachusetts delivers this angry two-day speech, uh, basically uh, attacking the pro-slavery stance, and he actually directs some uh, some remarks that are considered insulting towards South Carolina Senator Andrew Bolt, uh, Butler. Uh, a couple days later, Representative Preston Brooks, his nephew, uh, comes into the house and attacks Sumner with a heavy cane, beating him. Uh, hitting, hit him no less than 30 times with the cane. Sumner uh, collapsed and uh, fell unconscious and, and had to be hosp hospitalized. Uh, of course, Northerners were incensed by the brutal attack. Many Southerners uh, defended the attack as a, you know, a defense of, of, of Butler's honor. So predictably, Kansas is going to dominate the presidential election of 1856. Democratic president, Democratic candidate James Buchanan was going to run against Republican nominee John Fremont, and of course, the American or Know Nothing candidate was Millard Fillmore. Buchanan wins the election for two reasons: one, the immigrant populations in the North don't like the Know Nothings, and the Democrats uh, paint the Republicans as extremists on the slavery issue. So as a result, Buchanan was a voter's choice in the North and the South. Fremont, however, won all the states of the Upper North. Uh, and you have some important events during Buchanan's presidency. First, you have the Dred Scott uh, decision by the United States Supreme Court. <clears throat> he supported popular sovereignty, uh, so, but uh, after he uh, hopes that he would calm the issues, he had the uh, Supreme Court ruled against Dred Scott, a slave who had sued for his freedom. The argument that by living where slavery was illegal, he had become free. Uh, Dred Scott, um, the Dred Scott decision basically uh, said that that wasn't the case. Southerners see the Dred Scott decision as a victory, and Northerners obviously fear that slavery could now be banned, could not be banned in any territory. Uh, it kind of upheld the idea of slavery. Uh, the Lecompton Constitution was pro-slavery pro constitution written by the Kansas by the uh, Kansas Constitutional Convention. Uh, free soilers, however, won control of the legislature in 1857, and pro-slavery leaders proposed the voters decide on special provision of slavery. So if approved, slavery would be allowed. If defeated, uh, importation of slaves would be banned. But slaves already in Kansas would remain enslaved under this provision. Then in late 1859, John Brown and 21 of his followers attacked the U.S. arsenal at Harper's Ferry. Uh, to, to, they wanted to start a slave revolt, but they were, they were captured and stopped, and the revolt didn't happen. Um, anyway, so uh, they defeated Brown and his group, 
but and Brown was hanged on December 2nd, 1859. But this uh, shows how far the conflict has come.